Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you a new way in which I paint my Nurgle Demon engines using primarily pigments for the armor. Now usually my least favorite part of painting Hellbrutes or Bloat Drones or Plague Burst Crawlers as it's difficult to get a nice weathered look to it using traditional wash or paints without getting coffee staining or, or getting some weird looking blends on the armor. But using pigments, you can actually fly through the process and, and spend more time on the fun stuff, which for me, that is painting the weird Nurgle skin and the tentacles and all the nice little details that appear on these models. So I'm just going to show you quickly how I paint the armor and all the details on a bloat drone and I use all these techniques for the various other demon engines in the Nurgle army. So sit back and here we go. So I'm going to start off with my usual Zenithal highlighting of my model. I primed it gray and here I'm using some Xandri Dust by GW, the air paint version and I'm coating the entirety of my model with it. Within my spray booth, there's some weird blue lights. That's why it's turning out kind of bright yellow. It's more of a, a brownish yellow. If you know what Xandri Dust looks like, it looks a little bit different than this, but it'll be a nice base for the bone colored armor that I use for my Death Guard army. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to be taking kind of a, a light bone color. This is a, this is a birch by scale 75. And I'm shooting that down at about 75 degrees hitting all the highlights of the model on the ar the top of the armor, anywhere I know light is going to catch. And again, if you don't have an airbrush, you can use the GW spray paints for this, coat it with Xandri dust, and then maybe hit it at a, at a high angle with one of GW's white spray paints, and you will get a similar effect as what I have here. And then once my Xenithal has dried, I'm going to start painting all of the metal portions. I'm going to get all the metal portions finished and then I'm going to hit both the metal and the armor with my pigments to get my weathering done nice and quickly. So here I'm using the Vallejo Metal Color Series Gunmetal Black. These have become my favorite metals. They're really easy to blend together. They actually look very realistic. The pigment is very fine. The metal flakes are very fine within the paint. You can shoot it through an airbrush. It's good stuff. I'm going to go kind of the extra mile with this and do kind of some meticulous uh, layering of the metal colors. You can always just paint it a silver, hit it with a black wash and call it a day. But here I'm going to take the gun metal and then afterwards I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of the Vallejo steel color, mix it in with the silver, and then I'm going to hit about 75% of the metal areas leaving only that gun metal in the deep recesses or in areas that I know are going to be in deep shadow. And then for my final highlight on all the metal, I'm taking the Vallejo Aluminum, which is a very, very bright silver color, and I'm hitting only the areas that will be catching the most light on the top of the gun barrel on each of those little round cylinders there on all the sharp edges, and my metals will be complete once that is done. So with the metal finish, we're going to now start with our pigment. So here I'm taking a Vallejo pigment color, it's the rust color, and I'm going to be placing it in all the areas on the carapace here where I think that a lot of dirt and grime and kind of rust would accumulate. So here at the bottom and all around this kind of Nurgle symbol. And using pigment is great because you can really control the intensity of the pigment. If you want a really intense color, just leave the pigment on there and then fix it on with some alcohol, but if you want just kind of a subtle hint of color, you can apply the pigment on and then with your breath, blow off the excess and just get a, a again, a very fine hint of the pigment. So after I put down this kind of bright red color, I'm going to darken it down by using a burnt umber pigment. And I'm just placing this over top and I'll actually do kind of several passes with this burnt umber. I put it down and then again, using my breath, I blow off the excess and then I'll go back over it and until I, I kind of get a color that I'm satisfied with. And as you can see here, if, if you think the pigment is getting a little bit too intense in certain places, all you need to do is get a moist brush and you can wipe off any pigment that has got onto an area that you don't want it. So here I didn't want all the pigment covering up my metal color here, so I can just wipe off the excess, no big deal. 
unlike paint once you put this down it's not permanent until you seal it with alcohol or a or you can buy a special pigment sealants from hobby companies and so here you can see what it looks like after we've applied our pigment and it's actually pretty smooth transitions among the armor and since I'm happy with it I'm going to spray it here with just some isopropyl alcohol and that will lock down the pigment and just to get a little bit better blend on the armor I'm taking some Reichlin flesh shade which I've watered down quite a bit with glaze medium and I'm just running it over all of the lighter areas of the armor to blend them in, dirty them up a little bit, and have them match a little bit better with the pigment. And that's all you have to do to get pretty decent looking armor on your Nurgle engines. And now that our armor is taken care of, and we did it pretty quickly, we could spend a lot more time on all the really intricate details in the model. And so here I'm hitting the metal areas using the same process that we use for the armor, using our two pigments, putting them in the areas we think dirt and grime are going to accumulate, using a wet brush to help wipe away any excess pigment on areas that we want to be a highlight, and then our metallic areas will be finished. Alright, now it's time for my favorite part of Nurgle Models, which is painting some gross skin. So here I'm kind of changing up what I had been using. I've been using kind of a bluish, drowned look for my skin. Here I'm going for a kind of a deep, blood-rich, bruised look for my Nurgle skin. So here I'm using a nice deep burgundy color and some purple, and I'm laying in kind of the, the dark sh shadow areas with that. And then I'm blending in some P3 Thrall flesh, which is a really kind of gross, greenish skin tone. And I'm just using some wet blending techniques to blend all these three different colors together. So again, I'm putting the Thrall Flesh in areas of highlight, and then I'm just blending them while the paint is still wet into the red and the purple that I have placed in the shadow. And I'm just kind of playing around with it. That's what's great about wet blending. You kind of mix the colors together, play around with different tones until you're happy with something. So it's a, a great quick way to get some nice blends and just play around with your color palette. And once we've set our initial colors with our wet blends, now I'm going to start layering on our highlights here. I'm doing these with very thin coats using glaze medium to water them down. And first I'm taking a little bit of that violet color, mixing it in with that kind of 50-50 into the Thrall Flesh, get a nice grayish purple color. And I'm hitting the areas of the skin that I think are going to be highlights. The idea here is, I guess, kind of the the edges of the skin will kind of be necrotic and, and gray, and the recesses will be kind of bruised and bloody is the idea. So I'm mixing more and more of the Thrall Fletch into our initial highlight mixture, getting lighter and lighter, and hitting less and less area with the paint to highlight it. And I do think that layering works really well with wet blending. You know, you don't have to just use one or the other. You can use them in conjunction with one another to get some pretty decent results here. And then I'm going to be taking some sickly skin, which is a greenish white color, and I'm gonna be mixing in some Arctic blue with that to kinda of get a little grayish white color. And I'm only hitting the really highest regions of the skin with this color, the areas that I think will be uh, will be catching the most light, a lot of those warts and boils of the skin anywhere that I feel uh, I want to draw some contrast and then as the final high highlight I'm taking just that sickly skin which is again almost a white color and I'm just kind of really doing like little dots and streaks and creases in the skin just as the highest highlight to draw your eye to certain areas to kind of give the illusion of folds in some of the round areas of the skin and with that our skin will be done and I think it looks pretty gross so uh, this might now be my go-to uh, Nurgle skin recipe. And now we're just going to kind of be, now that we got the skin and pretty much the armor taken care of, now it's on to the little bits and details that are left. So I'm going to be, all this tubing that you see hanging around the different parts of the model, I'm going to be co covering entire black. That's a secret weapon miniatures paint. And I'm going to be then highlighting that with their rubber highlight. And then I'm going to be painting all the tubing areas with flesh on it with a more lighter flesh tone, with a kind of a, a normal Caucasian flesh tone. So I'm starting with some Indian Shadow by Scale 75 as our base color. Then I'll be mixing some of my pink skin tone into the Indian Shadow for my second layer, and then layering up 
and then layering up into the straight pink flesh uh, for the top portion of this little hose area. And then I'm gonna keep mixing and I'm gonna mix in the light skin tone into the pink flesh to get my next highlight, hitting only the very upper portions of the skin, the areas that I think light will be catching. And then finally, for my high highlight, I'm taking that light flesh and just hitting a few areas where I want to draw your eye. And then actually I decided that wasn't quite enough contrast for me, so I took a little bit of that sickly skin and again made little streaks and dots on the areas, on certain areas to create a high contrast. And then I took some of that Reichland flesh shade, watered it down, and went over all of those tubing areas. Next up, we're going to deal with the lens of the, I guess, the eye of our Demon Engine. And we're going to do some OSL effects and, get, and try and create a nice little lens here. So I went with kind of a Mediterranean blue by Scale 75. Did a nice coat of that. And then I watered it down with some glazed medium. And I'm hitting the areas where I think that the light is going to be refracting onto so around the edges of the carapace there and down on that little bit of skin below the lens. Watered it down quite a bit just to get a hint of that blue for our OSL effect. And then I'm going back to the lens and on the bottom portion of the lens I'm going to wet blend that Mediterranean blue together with a, a lighter kind of arctic blue. It's actually a uh, the light blue by P3, I, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I'm going to be wet blending those two together. I want the light, lighter portion, lighter blue on the bottom of the lens, darker blue at the top. Then I'm mixing in some of that birch color by scale 75 into the blue, creating a really light sky blue. And I'm hitting the lowest sections of the lens with that, at some points I feel like I get a little bit too light, then I just kind of wet blend a little bit of the dark blue in there. Again, just playing around with the wet blending until I get a nice contrast that I think looks realistic. And then I use a little bit of really light blue to create the bottom of the lens. And then at the top, to finish off the effect, I'm going to be taking some pure white and just hit it, doing a few dots at the top. And that will give us our little lens effect. And then we'll be moving on to the bone areas, all the bones and spikes around the carapace. I'm just going to be wet blending some bootstrapper brown into that birch color that we've used as a kind of a high highlight on, on our armor. Just playing around with the two colors, getting a, a nice contrast between the bone color and the brown. All right, again. I, I'm starting to use wet blending a lot in everything I do. I just think it's a quick and easy way to get some decent blends. As you can see here, it only takes a few seconds. It's not that difficult. Otherwise, you could spend 10 minutes layering up these bone areas when you could do it in about 30 seconds with some wet blending. And so once we have all of our bone sections finished, now we're gonna finish up the last weathering portions on our model. I'm gonna be taking some typhus corrosion and I'm gonna be putting that in all those all those dents and dings in the armor, anywhere where it, there's areas of the carapace that have been cut out. And then I'm going over the typhus corrosion with some RZA rust, kind of highlighting it, just in, in choice areas, just kind of almost over brushing it. And once that's finished, I'm just going to take a pure white and go back to all those bone sections we just painted and I'm just gonna draw some lines some striations in the horns as that's what you often see with horns in nature it looks like almost parallel lines running up and down them so that gives me a decent effect and then I'm taking a green patina color this is by Vallejo and I'm going back to all those divots and I'm placing just a hint of this bluish green color this is more realistic when you're dealing with like bronze armors, but for these Nurgle things, I like to throw it in there, even on steel or here on the carapace, just because it looks kind of nice and gross. And then finally, we're going to do some edge highlighting here using that birch color, just using the edges of my brush to hit any of the sharp lines that appear on the model. Again, just to give your eyes something interesting to look at, a little more contrast around the edges. 
And then in the last minute, I decided I wanted to go back and touch up some of the metal areas with some silver, some in some areas that I felt that the pigments kind of toned it down. So I'm just kind of picking a few random places, the tips of the spikes and some of the hard edges and just doing kind of an edge highlight. And with that, we will be done. And so here is my finished bloat drone model. As you can see, I made one of my swamp bases that I've been doing with all my Nurgle models. I'm not going to show you how I did that here. If you want to see, you can go back to my swamp base video, which I'll link in the description. Also, I poured the resin when it was a little bit too humid out, so there's tons of micro bubbles. It actually doesn't look all that great, so I, I really didn't want to show you how to make a subpar looking swamp base here. But anyway... As far as the model goes, I think it turned out really nice. I really like using pigments for the armor. It's much quicker than my previous method. If you've seen my other video on how I paint the power armor on Plague Marines, I, I used to use a bunch of different washes, and it took forever, basically due to drying time. It's They were easy techniques, but they still took forever. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, I feel that the pigments are maybe even easier than using washes, and they're really quick. Like, we got the armor of the bloat drone done in only a few minutes, and had a lot of free time to work on the more intricate details. So I really don't know if there's a quicker way to get some really nice-looking armor for the Nurgle, especially if you're going for a more realistic theme like I am. And in fact, I'm going to start using this method on my normal infantry my plague marines and i've even gone back to some plague marines i've already painted then used some pigments to deepen the shadows and it looks really good so anyway hopefully you got something from this video if you did please hit that like button leave a comment below subscribe and i will see you all soon with my next video take care